being told that there's possibly an active shooter at the senior high school. A frightening morning at schools across our region. We have team coverage of the mass hoax of shootings and the response from law enforcement. Parents rushing to schools looking for information. Stoker Wise Zurich covers that angle. And Nicole Faschino breaks down what a lockdown is and what a school does when one is implemented. Six News. Coverage you can count on starts now. Chilling calls to three 911 centers in our area reporting an active shooter in a school. The police response was immediate, not yet knowing if it was part that it was part of a large hoax. This is an example of what they were expecting. Sounded like a weapon that just came over. Is that an accident? It is. It was actually for APD. I apologize. Uh, we're being told that there's possibly an active shooter at the senior high school. Copy 506. We don't have anything specific other than he told us it was a white male. There are to be six victims in the bathroom, and we have not got anything further. We lost contact with him. We don't know what bathroom he's in. Law enforcement saying the schools were victims of what's called a swatting hoax. We'll explain what that is in just a moment. Even though it was a hoax, the response by police, school officials, and parents was urgent. We have team coverage tonight. Our Douglas Brapp is looking at how schools responded. Stoker Wysork talking to parents who went to the schools. Nicole Faschino explains the lockdown procedures many schools use today. But we start with Brock Owens, who explains how law enforcement handled the situation. Brock? Jen and Sean, Pennsylvania State Police say calls were made to 911 centers across the state claiming to have an active shooter or a bomb threat at the school in their county. The Belfont School District, Bishop Carroll Catholic, and Altoona Area High School are three of the schools that were targeted today, officials say. State Police say the claims were made and the calls, the calls, and the claims and the calls were determined to be fake but uh, no shots were fired in any of the schools. But police say they treated the calls seriously and responded accordingly. Our initial alert is a, a high-pitched tone on our radios. So whenever we hear that, it gets everybody's attention. And then whenever that's followed by uh, an active shooter at the school district, you know, everybody's adrenaline is through the roof, roof. But our first thought is just get there, you know, get there as soon as we possibly can and get inside the school as soon as we possibly can violence in the past that were you know mostly bomb threats and such you know we haven't had one of those in quite some time but that's the first time that we actually had to respond to something of this magnitude. Cambria County District Attorney Greg Niebauer says after the call to Bishop Carroll it was decided to put all schools in the county on lockdown. Law enforcement trains for this and frankly students and teachers trained for this. It's a shame that we have to train for it. Uh, we're going to take a look at everything that happened today. Uh, we're going to see what we've done well and what we need to improve. Swatting calls have been scaring students and staff at schools across the country recently. In early March, nearly a dozen Nebraska high schools received swatting calls. Yesterday, at least 28 schools in Massachusetts fell victim to swatting, and today, not only schools in Pennsylvania, but also schools in New Jersey got calls. FBI Pittsburgh tells us that they will continue working with local, state, and federal officials on these matters. They also urge the public to stay vigilant and report any suspicious activity. Reporting in the newsroom, Brock Owens, 6 News. We want to turn to Center County now where we find our Douglas Brapp. What, what school officials across the region are saying, he's in front of Belfont Area High School where students and staff were evacuated this morning. Doug? That's right, guys. Police and school officials move those evacuees temporarily to Rogers Stadium right next to the high school right behind me. And uh, Belfont Area School District Superintendent Tammy Burnaford tells us Belfont Police spearheaded this evacuation effort. She says as the morning progressed and the scene was determined safe, students were either taken home on buses or by their legal guardians. They cleared out the football field by shortly after 12 noon. Burnaford telling us there were approximately 850 students and about 70 to 80 staff at the high school today. That's out of the roughly 900 high schoolers usually in attendance. Burnerford adds that there was about the same number of staff at the middle school where there was approximately 550 out of the less than 600 students present. Everyone at the middle school and the elementary schools sheltered in place.
We have counselors from all across the area and our own counselors on site for kids and staff, and we will have counselors and staff, uh, other staff available tomorrow to everyone too. Moving on to what school officials in Blair and Cambria counties are saying, the Altoona Area School District Superintendent telling us that the telling us the threatening call they received came from outside the school district. He says Altoona police arrived on scene within 60 seconds of the call going out. The superintendent adding that teachers, staff and students followed active shooter protocol, including turning off the lights in classrooms and other rooms, saying that schools back in session at Altoona. The superintendent tells us sporting events will continue as planned. A heavy police response also reported at Bishop Carroll High School after they received similar calls there. Nearby Jackson Elementary and Central Cambria School District placed on lockdown too. The superintendents we spoke with both talked about how seriously they take these situations. Quite simply, this, this, was, this was a hoax and we're treating it as such and we have returned to normalcy. To me, this is, this is terrorism because you're, 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 you're playing on the fears of parents and, 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 and children. It's just, it's just absolutely unconscionable that someone would, would, would think this is a prank or a hoax. It's unbelievable. Belfont Superintendent Bernerford uh, telling us that uh, classes at the high school are canceled for the rest of the day, and now this is just at the high school. And Belfont Police Chief Weaver telling me classes will resume tomorrow here at, at the high school. And uh, we're told Bar uh, Bishop Carroll also let out for the day. Reporting live in Belfont, Douglas Braff, 6 News. Now back to the term swatting. It's defined by the FBI as making a hoax call to 911 to draw a response from law enforcement, usually a SWAT team. The individuals who engage in this activity use technology to make it appear that the emergency call is coming from the victim's phone. Sometimes swatting is done for revenge, sometimes as a prank. Either way, it's a serious crime and one that has potentially dangerous consequences. These calls caused panic and concern for parents, many running to their child's school. Stoker Y. Zork is in Altoona. Stoker, what did parents say happened when they heard today's news? Well, Sean, parents at all the schools showed up looking for their children, and I'm now standing outside the Altoona Area High School where one of those calls came in earlier this morning, and I talked to parents here, many of them saying they're glad to see everyone safe. Really relieved. I remember when I was in high school in Columbine and all that and the stress and that was going through my mind and I'm really relieved, really happy and I was on my, the phone with my daughter the whole time. What we do know is that students are now reunited with their parents. They lined 6th Avenue here for hours today. Multiple blocks of moms, dads and even distant relatives waiting to see their children. Police letting them in four at a time. Parents tell me they're glad that nothing else happened and others say they wish the school was clearer with the details as they contacted parents. One describing the panic that their child said began in the classroom. I, I had an anxiety attack. Um, it was not fun because we didn't have all the information at first. So um, all we heard at first was on Facebook, people were posting that there was a shooter at the school. Um, we didn't get a phone call from the school until you know, 10, 15 minutes after everything got posted, so. Another parent telling me she was impressed with how police officers handled the situation. Reporting live in Blair County, Stoker Wysorek, 6 News. Parents and students in neighboring counties were also on high alert. Nicole Fashino tells us what the day looked like for them. Nicole. Hey, Sean, so because of these calls, hundreds of students and teachers were put into lockdown across our area today, and that includes Greater Johnstown School District here behind me, where students had to hide in the dark and hope what they were hearing was not real. The DA says there was one call in Cambria County that was believed to believed to be a hoax, but it's because of all these calls across the state today that classrooms were temporarily turned into shelters for hundreds of students. 
For a lockdown procedure, the doors are locked and the lights are turned off and students are put into a place where they're out of sight and can't be heard. Nobody comes into the building and nobody goes out. That was the case for Greater Johnstown here today for about an hour and a half with teachers and students in hiding. On the other hand, after that initial lockdown order, schools could decide to go into a shelter in place. And in that case, classes continue as normal, but the doors are still locked and nobody can enter or leave the building without permission. Cambria County District Attorney Greg Niebauer says it's a shame that schools have to do drills for these kinds of situations, but those trainings work, which he says was seen today. Law enforcement trains for this, and frankly, students and teachers trained for this. I can say what we saw uh, the students and staff doing at these schools was exactly what they're supposed to do. And Niebauer tells us that they will analyze what happened today and then they'll figure out what went right, what went well, and what also went wrong so that they can use that moving forward. Reporting live in Cambria County, Nicole Faschino, 6 News.